Hello, I'm Amrit Kamboj. And I'm Patrick Overston. We are the authors of the concise review in the Mayo Clinic Proceedings titled Chronic Abdominal Wall Pain, a Common Yet Overlooked Etiology of Chronic Abdominal Pain. We would like to thank our senior author, Dr. Amy Oxentenko, for her support with this manuscript. Chronic abdominal pain is commonly encountered throughout medicine and encompasses a broad differential diagnosis, including both organic and functional disorders. Patients often undergo an extensive diagnostic workup before a definitive diagnosis is made, resulting in significant healthcare costs and increased patient morbidity. Chronic abdominal wall pain, often referred to as anterior cutaneous nerve entrapment syndrome, is an underrecognized cause of chronic abdominal pain. Early recognition of this condition allows providers to offer reassurance and therapeutic interventions while avoiding costly and potentially harmful diagnostic testing. Chronic abdominal wall pain accounts for approximately 2% of all patients presenting to the emergency department with abdominal pain and 10% of patients with chronic abdominal pain in the outpatient setting. Chronic abdominal wall pain can affect patients of all ages, but is most common in the fifth and sixth decades of life and is four times more prevalent in women compared to men. Chronic abdominal wall pain occurs due to entrapment of the cutaneous branches of sensory nerves that supply the abdominal wall as they pass through a fibrous ring in the posterior sheath of the rectus abdominis. Mechanical abnormalities such as soft tissue edema, fibrosis, or scarring from prior surgeries can result in entrapment of these nerves as they pass through the fibrous ring. The differential diagnosis for chronic abdominal pain is vast, as abdominal pain can originate from various visceral and parietal pain sources. Chronic abdominal wall pain has several characteristic clinical features that help differentiate it from other etiologies of chronic abdominal pain. Patients with chronic abdominal wall pain classically present with chronic, sharp pain that is localized to a focal part of the abdomen. The pain worsens with actions that tense the abdominal muscles, such as standing, sitting, or coughing, and may improve in the supine position. The Carnet sign can be assessed by a two-step examination technique and should be done in all patients suspected of having chronic abdominal wall pain. In step one, the clinician identifies and palpates the area of maximal tenderness while the patient is in a resting, supine position. In step two, the patient is asked to raise both legs off the examination table or raise their head and shoulders off the bed as to tense the abdominal muscles while the clinician palpates the abdomen. The Carnet's maneuver is considered positive when palpation of the abdomen in the tense position elicits the same or more tenderness as the rest position. In patients where the diagnosis remains unclear but chronic abdominal wall pain seems likely, a trigger point injection can help confirm the diagnosis as some patients have immediate relief of their symptoms following injection with an anesthetic. The mainstay of treatment for chronic abdominal wall pain consists of reassurance, activity modification, possible physical therapy, and pain relief. The first step in the management of patients with chronic abdominal wall pain is to provide reassurance that while symptoms can be quite painful and disabling, they're typically non-progressive and have no long-term health sequelae. Activity modification involves eliminating potential triggers for the abdominal pain, such as vigorous exercises that tense the abdominal muscles. In patients with mild symptoms, reassurance and activity modification can often help allay patient concerns and suffice as the sole treatment. For patients with moderate to severe symptoms, pain relief is typically achieved with a trigger point injection using an anesthetic with or without a glucocorticoid. The clinical response is superior with combination therapy compared to an anesthetic alone. Patients with partial relief of symptoms or recurrent symptoms after complete remission following one trigger point injection could be offered an additional trigger point injection. Other adjunctive treatment options to trigger point injections may include heating pads, 
lidocaine patches, and systemic therapy consist consisting of non-opioid analgesics, anti-epileptics, and low-dose tricyclic antidepressants, although these confer limited benefit. If patients fail to respond after the above interventions, other etiologies of chronic abdominal pain should be reconsidered and reevaluated. We thank you for your time and hope you find this presentation useful. We hope you found this presentation from the content of Mayo Clinic Proceedings valuable. Our journal's mission is to promote the best interests of patients by advancing the knowledge and professionalism of the physician community. If you are interested in more information about us, our home page is www.mayoclinicproceedings.org. There you will find access information for our social media content, such as additional videos on our YouTube channel or journal updates on Facebook. You can also follow us on Twitter. More information about healthcare at Mayo Clinic is available at www.mayoclinic.org. This video content is copyrighted by Mayo Foundation for Medical Education and Research.